If you're tired of having your live streams look laggy, choppy, or even distorted, then no more because in this video, I'm going to provide you with the best settings so that way you can achieve a clear, smooth, and crispy 1080p 60fps stream no matter if you're live streaming the kick twitch or even youtube so jumping straight into the video the very first thing you want to do is open up obs studios and inside of obs you want to come to the settings tab on the bottom right hand corner and it's going to bring up this particular menu right here on the left hand side you will see that we have some tabs you then want to go ahead and select the videos tab as this is going to be the foundation of your live stream because you're going to be setting up your canvas, which is this right here. And so if your resolution for your canvas is off and the size of your canvas is off, then your live stream is just going to be off. So to make this easy on us, we want to set our canvas resolution to our monitor. So basically, if you have either a 1920 by 1080 monitor, or maybe if you have a 1440p monitor, then you want to set that as your canvas resolution. And so for your output scale, you also want to go ahead and leave this at 1920 by 1080. And if you did do a 1440p uh, resolution, then I highly recommend downscaling the filter to Lanskos, as this is going to give you the best possible resolution. Now for your common FPS values, you wanna go ahead and leave this at 60 FPS, so that way it doesn't fall up under that. So now that we have all of our resolutions set in the videos tab, we now need to go ahead and come to the output tab, and we wanna change our output mode from simple over to advanced, so that way we can see all of our settings that we're gonna be utilizing, and we're gonna update these manually. Now, the first thing you want to do is come over to the audio tab at the top right here and just make sure you change your audio bit rate to the highest possible quality. So right now, the highest possible quality inside of OBS is uh, 320. So make sure you just set that for your video audio tracks. So once that's done, come back over to the streamings tab, change your audio track to one. The reason why you want to change your audio track to one is because this is where you know all of your audio is going to come from. So like your music volume, your gameplay, your microphone, your teammate microphones, etc. So go ahead and select one for your audio encoder. You want to do FFMPEG AAC. And then for your Twitch VOD track, you want to make sure you turn this on and then you want to set this to either two or three. So the reason why we want to make sure that we have this set to anything other than VOD track one is because this is going to remove any type of background music or maybe even alerts that we have throughout our stream that's going to get uploaded to Twitch. So this is great if you want to be able to download your VODs later on to create videos for YouTube or maybe even vertical content for Instagram, TikTok, or even YouTube shorts. So once you have this set to like two, three, four, five, or six, you're now going to come down to your video encoder and you want to make sure that you're using H.264. Do not use X264. And the reason why is because H.264 utilizes your graphics card, which will actually result in a better stream quality than utilizing your CPU, which is the X264. Now, if you have an NVIDIA's graphics card or AMD, then it's obviously going to show up as AMD or NVIDIA, but just make sure you're utilizing H.264. For your rescale output, you can leave this as is because we already did the rescale output in the videos tab earlier. So you can just leave this as is. For your encoder settings, you want to make sure you change your rate control to either CBR or consistent bit rate. They mean the exact same thing. So go ahead and make sure you have this set. And speaking of our bit rates, we want to make sure that we're able to utilize the maximum amount of bit rate that our internet can handle. In order for us to find out what that is, we need to come over to this website, speedtest.net. And I'm gonna make sure that I have a link to this website down in the description below so that we can go directly to this page. And so what we're gonna do now is click on this big go button that's right here. And what this is gonna do is assess our internet speed. So basically our download speed as well as our upload speed. Now you wanna make sure that you're focusing on the upload speed because that's gonna determine how much bit rate that we can use inside of OBS Studios. 
now you want to make sure that you have a minimal of 10 megabytes per second of upload speed the reason why is because we're going to multiply our upload speed by 1000 that is the formula we're going to use so we're multiplying our upload speed by 1000 and if you have 10 then that's going to give you 10,000 kilobytes of bit rate to work with and we're only going to be utilizing 80 percent of our bit rate so that way we can have consistency within our stream now even though 10 megabytes of upload speed is enough to achieve a 1080p stream on twitch as well as on kick if you're somebody that wants to mainly stream on youtube then you're going to need 12 megabytes of upload speed and you're going to want to use 10,000 kilobytes per second inside of obs so just keep that in mind as we move forward in this video so once you understand what's your bit rate is we're going to come back inside of obs we're going to go ahead and put that right here now if you have let's say six megabytes per second or seven megabytes per second of upload speed then you're going to want to bring your settings down to maybe a 720p 60 fps stream but that's still pretty good quality however we're trying to reach for 8,000 kilobytes per second so that we can do a 1080p stream so if you are wireless like if you're using your wi-fi get an ethernet cable plug that into the back of your computer and that's going to give you a little bit of a bump up with your upload speed so that way you can achieve a 1080p 60 fps stream so what we're going to do now is we're going to come to our keyframe interval we're going to put that at two megabytes per second for our presets you want to try to achieve for the slowest best quality However, if you're experiencing a little bit of lag, you can still do the P6 or even P5. But you want to achieve the P7 if you can handle it. For your tuning, you want to do high quality. And then for your multipass, you're going to do two pass full resolution. And then for your profile, you want to set that to high. For these two options, you want to go ahead and have both of these checked. And then for your B-frame intervals, you want to leave it at two. Now, once you have set all of those settings here, we're now going to go over to the audio tab. And now you want to make sure that your desktop audio, I personally have mine disabled because I like to customize my audio settings, which by the way, if you guys want to learn how to split all of your audio sources, I'm going to make sure that I have a link to that also down in the description below. So that way you can actually disable the desktop audio and you can have full customization over all of the audio sources inside of OBS. Now for your microphone, you wanna go ahead and set your microphone to either your headset or your mic, and then you can leave everything else as is. And so to now make sure that we don't have any type of lag whatsoever, we're gonna come down to advance. We're gonna scroll all the way down to network and we're going to check this box right here that says to dynamically change bit rate to manage congestion data and so basically what this does is that if there is any type of lag spikes within your actual internet itself the only thing that this is going to do is just going to drop the quality of the video a little bit until your internet speed picks right back up and then it goes right back to the original quality that you have set inside of obs so go ahead and check this option and then the only thing we're going to do now is we're going to come back up to stream. And this is optional. And so let's say you have a PC that can stream at 4K. You can actually enable this feature because Twitch can now support 4K live streaming. So what you can do is you're going to go ahead and you're going to enable this option right here. You're going to set both of these to auto. And then what's going to happen is Twitch is now going to receive different types of video formats from your computer from what it is that your computer can handle and it's going to give the option to all of your viewers so they'll have like 4k they'll have 1440 they'll have uh, 1080p 720 and so on and so forth so you can go ahead and check this option and then go ahead and click apply and okay and you have now officially finished all of your settings that is needed for a nice clean 1080p 60 fps stream and so with that being said that is going to be all for today's video now if you found this helpful or if you learned something new 
make sure you give this a big fat thumbs up make sure you guys go ahead and smash that subscribe button as well as turning on post notifications so that way you do not miss a single video that gets posted up on this channel and in case if you want to learn how to split your audio sources inside of obs so that way you have full control over all of your audios make sure you click on this video right here and i'll walk you through step by step on how you're able to do that straight inside of obs studios